What's up, peeps? So here, working on the Revo 2.0. Obviously, it's got a lot of upgrades. Um, just thought I'd start sharing all my experiences with it and all the other cars. Um, and I got the Slash 4x4, the Street NASCAR, Kyle Busch. But yeah, anyways, uh, today, we're gonna be working on changing the spring rates. Um, all the upgrades and goodies I put on it, it's gotten kind of heavy. So we're gonna go with Either the 4.4s, but I think I'm gonna put on the actual, the 5.4s first, because it is heavy, like I said. It, it's got a lot of, set this up, right? It's got a lot of suspension sag. Once it settles, it's just, oh, I got a shock out actually, but yeah, you'll see. But uh, once I get it going, I'll let you guys know what's up, what I do. I got the limit straps, I gotta take off the rear, uh, Rear part, rear chassis brace, I'll probably take off. That's obviously upgraded. I got the RPM blue arms, front and back, um, RPM front bumper. I did the Proline uh, A-scale wing. Actually looks pretty cool. So yeah, we'll get going on it. Let's get started. <laughs> While watching Mark Santa Maria uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> Shout out to you, Mark, if you even see this about it. So I've already removed this rear rocker arm screw which connects the shock bottom to the rear rocker arm. So I have taken that screw out, it's actually bent. I'm glad I'm changing this now. And then, um, yeah, I'm, like I said, we're gonna change the spring rate probably to the 5.4 first, and then go from there, go do some test drives. But like I said, so we're going to remove this top shock screw. Kind of difficult when you hold the camera. I'm gonna have to get the GoPro going on the next one. So we'll take that screw all the way out. Like I said, I'm running um, 90 millimeter um, limit straps because I was pulling um, the rear dog bone out on some crashes or big jumps. I don't know how chassis flex or whatnot, but it was actually pulling out of the wishbone, which is crazy. So chassis braces have basically eliminated that I do need to get the chassis braces from the front. That's next. So I order those on Amazon. None of the shops around me have them. So let's say take this screw out all the way. Pull it off to the side. We should be able to pull the shock out like that. So you can see I, <laughs> I have that shock pretty tightened down. Um, I did bump the weight up to uh, 50 weight and it didn't solve it. So these are the stock springs. They are a 4.1 uh, coil spring rate. And we're gonna do, we're gonna do the part number 5443 by Traxxas. And that is 5.4 and it's a pink. It's actually got a little bit of pink on the shock. And like this one is 5441 4.4 and it's got the black paint on it so that's the way to tell by part numbers and by the color on the shock so what you're going to do see if i can do this one-handed is you're going to lift up and then you'll twist you'll see a little the groove right there so you lift that up and then slide that out and then the springs will come out super easy so i'm gonna go ahead and do that now on the rear shocks change the springs clean them up and then we'll get back to you okay shocks are out went ahead and just lift the rear screw and the rear chassis brace shocks came out okay um i actually wanted to show you the difference in the size of the coils and the springs actually way thicker obviously harder to compress I think it's gonna solve the problem on the really hard bottoming out when I jump this thing. Like I said, this thing is, I think it's a tank. It's the biggest RC car I've ever had. And when I threw these uh, Proline Badline belt of tires on, whoo, they aren't light. They're pretty heavy, but man, they kick ass and they do not balloon. No balloon. I already I ripped off my stock Traxxas wheels within the first week I had it. So, all right. So like I said, I got the, I got the shocks all cleaned up, looking good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw the spring, uh, the springs back on them. 
and slap it back in the rear. And uh, I probably won't show you anything on the front. It's pretty basic. Like I said, we are going to be removing these two screws and these two screws. And then you should be able to just lift up on the car and slide the shocks right out. And then repeat, repeat the same process as we're doing on the fronts. So here are the shock caps that need to be cleaned. And you can see that slot and that little groove and they basically just go on like that. And then you gotta compress the spring, slide it on, and then let it compress on it, and it pulls itself in. Pretty simple. So you guys can do this yourself. Don't take it to a shop. Learn how to work on your car. When you fix it, you can break it, you can tune it, you can say you can change the different weights of oil in your shocks. You can make it lighter, thicker. I mean, pretty pretty good options for an RC car. So, all right. Time to put you guys down and get these in. Okay, the rear is all done. Pretty much got about how I think I want it. Like I said, I don't got that, that big sag. It would, it would sit like that without even touching it. So, it's got some good bounce back. I like it. All right, like I said, now to the front. We'll give a little bit more rundown. Um, I did blow a motor <laughs> right away. So I'm running the Hobbywing Max 8 2200 KV um, A scale motor. I did throw on a GPM uh, motor fan, keep things cool. Uh, let's turn around the front because <laughs> I actually read this before I bought the car. Um, one of the things to look, look out for is probably going to happen is the servos are going out, one of them or both of them. Both of mine went out at the same time. I don't know. Um, sorry, Trax, it's not trying to bash or nothing, but it just seems like having two servos would just kind of be buying up against each other. So I went ahead and did a single servo conversion. I did the Traxxas uh, heavy duty, these 400 pneumatic torque units. I forget how to say it, but yeah, super strong, super uh, reliable. And uh, yeah, eliminated that and it's gone, easy peasy. So um, I actually I can't remember the name. I try and throw a link in the description if I remember below. Went ahead and did the uh, stainless steel uh, aluminum sk uh, skid plates because you know I'm gonna beat the crap out of this thing. So it has definitely taken a beating, and I'm loving it. So that's why I'm doing the spring rate thing too because I have thrown a bunch of parts on it. So time to do the front. Like I said, we're gonna be undoing this screw right here and this screw right here on the rocker arm. On both sides, you'll slide the sh shocks out, clean them up, throw the new springs on, and throw them back in. So, we'll go ahead and do that now, and then uh, probably take it out and do the test run. Hit the little kicker ramp a couple times, and uh, yeah. It's hot outside though, California. I know you guys, Arizona or Texas are probably laughing at me, but it's 101. So, alrighty, back to it. So I thought I'd show you guys just because I forgot when I changed the oil on the shocks, you had to do this. So this little screw that is in between the two shocks, it holds on your bumper. Okay. So now you just slide the bumper straight back towards away from the car. And then boom, easy peasy. There's that uh, stainless steel bash guard I got. So then now, boom. Got your shocks out. So it's way better than taking off the whole chassis brace just to remove this one screw, which is right there. You see that slot? And then the bumper just slides out towards you. And then you ha have the room to remove the shocks instead of taking that out. Okay, front is back on. Put it back together. Now on the front bumper, it's pretty simple. There's that slot right there. And there's that right there. You're basically just gonna rest that little top part on top of that bracket. And you're gonna see it just slide right in. And then you'll see that is butted up to the steel plate which holds in your suspension pins that hold your A-arms in. So, and then you go ahead and throw that screw in right there. One screw. I, I, go, I still throw Loctite on all my plastics um, uh, inserts, not inserts, but screws that go into plastic. 
because they do strip and stretch. So go ahead and throw some Loctite on all your screws when you reassemble back together. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Right, it's finally cooled down. Charge, ready to go. All right, all right. Yeah, the way the car. Feeling good already. Let this car go by. Back up a little bit. Ooh. Right at my feet. <laughs> oh, there's mom. Bottoming out. I'm not going big. I'm just gonna say just down it in right now. All right, all right, all right. It's a little hard filming by yourself. Rigged up a little phone mount to the controller. Speed pass for you guys. <laughs> Woo! They're a little stiff in the street. Got a little speed wobble going. Turn that control down a little bit. One thing with these tracks is if you, if you know what to replace, like the control arms, I do have the Intigy uh, steel drive shafts in here. That's a big help. Let's see if we get a good one for you guys. Small ram for a big car. All good. I did see some plastic. All right, one more, and then we're gonna maybe get a small one out. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, that was the air, right over here. Alright guys, that's it for the end of this one. You guys be cool.